this is how the page looks right now and this is okay but I would really want to make it appear much much better so what we would do is we would start using a framework which is called bootstrap and the website for bootstrap is getbootstrap.com so basically bootstrap is the most popular HTML CSS and JavaScript framework for developing responsive applications we want to make use of bootstrap in our application so that we would be able to style the elements in the page much better so if you look at it right now it does not really look well aligned or anything like that so we would want to add in bootstrap and use the different things which are present in bootstrap so that we can style this page much much better one of the options which is present to use bootstrap is I can download the bootstrap jar manually I can go to this website download it manually and use it but I really hate downloading things myself and I would rather have Maven download them the great thing is now there's a concept called web jars earlier we were able to download Java code in terms of jars so I would be able to use Maven to download jars and use them these jars contain Java code but now with web jars which is a new concept which is coming in should be even able to download JavaScript files so even JS CSS JavaScripts CSS style sheets you can download that using Maven and run them using this concept called web jars so what we are going to use is use a web jar for bootstrap let's get started how do I get the boot web jars for bootstrap you can simply do a Google search do a Google search web jar bootstrap and you should be able to get this dependency very easily or even in an easier way go to step 24.md and you will be able to find this in there so let's go ahead and quickly add this to our pom.xml so I'll add this logging is the least thing I would really put it just about spring MVC the other thing you'd see is we are having a dependency on jQuery I'll add that as well for bootstrap bootstrap internally uses jQuery so I would add in jQuery as well we are using 3.3.6 version of bootstrap and 1.9.1 version of jQuery so I mean the real version does not really matter so it's bootstrap 3 and jQuery 1.x so this should be more than sufficient for us to be able to style our web application better so now what I would need to do is I would need to restart the server so I'll just stop the server and use the shortcut way restart it while it restarts I would also now in the JSP I would want to make use of this let's start with the list to do's.jsp in the list to do's.jsp we would want to make use of the CSS and the JavaScript files which the bootstrap provides us with how do we do that okay it's done so now you would see if you go in to the Maven dependencies you would see bootstrap and jQuery let's further expand the bootstrap stuff web jars bootstrap 3.3.6 and CSS contains a bootstrap.css this is what we would be using or we might be using min.css and you would have a JavaScript as well in here bootstrap.min. bootstrap.min.js that the JavaScript we would want to use and we also have the CSS in here and if you further expand the jQuery you would also see the jQuery.js in a specific folder in there we are using a concept called web jars so the way we would include a JavaScript from a web jar is very simple let's start with a simple style sheet we would want to add the bootstrap style sheet into this particular JSP the best place usually to add in style sheets is in the head so we add style sheets in the head and we would typically add JavaScripts at the end of just before the closing body tag this is more for performance reasons your page loads up faster if you have the JavaScripts in here so CSS in here and the JavaScripts down here the first question is where is the bootstrap how do I go to this particular path typically the path we would start with is web jars bootstrap 3.3.6 CSS and bootstrap.css you can either type them in manually or what I would start doing is I would take the CSS file first and add it where where should be the CSS file added in I should add it in the head so if you look at it it has the entire path starting from web jars so web jars bootstrap 3.3.6 that's exactly the path which we looked at earlier so that's 
very good that's very neat now to use bootstrap we need two more javascript files as well so we have one css file already added in now let's quickly add in the js files as well so these are the js files so i added just before the last body i mean just before the closing body tag and that's where I put in the jQuery.min.js and bootstrap.min.js. You can type this in manually also. You can find it from the jar, which was downloaded. You can go and check, starting from web jar, where that particular CS is present. That's where it's present. So, now, there's one more small step which would be needed before this succeeds. Let's see that practically. So, I'm doing a refresh of the page. You'd see that list to do's is succeeding, so uh, 200. But bootstrap.min.css, it's not able to find. The Spring Framework is not able to find bootstrap.min.css. It says 404, that basically means the resource is not found. So bootstrap.min.css is not found. The thing is, all these files, where are they present? They are present in the resources folder of the jar. In the resources folders of this jar, the bootstrap stuff is there. In the resources folder of jQuery jar, this web jars folder is there. But we want to use this stuff from the resources folder inside the jars. How do we do that? There is a small configuration that we need to make. So that is the MVC resources configuration. This configuration we would need to add in to the to do servlet.xml. So let's quickly go to the to do servlet.xml and just before MTC annotation driven, I would add in this particular configuration. And I would actually need to trigger off the loading of the context again. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go to login controller. I mean, just do some dummy change so that it triggers the launch of the whole thing again. So now the spring context is loaded and now we refresh the page. There you see, so now everything is 200. So now it's able to get the CSS file. So if you look at the CSS file, there would be a lot of CSS in here. So you can try and look at what's there, jQuery.min.css, bootstrap.min.css, just look at what's there. I mean, uh, there's a minified file. I mean, one important thing is we are using a min files. So basically, the bootstrap.css is a huge file. And every time the bootstrap.css gets transferred from the server to the browser so what we would do is we would minify it and we are using the minified version of that particular css minified is you can kind of think of it as a zipped file so i'm using a zipped version of the css zipped version of the javascripts and zipped version of the bootstrap.min I mean bootstrap framework as well so that the application launches up much more quickly so that's good so now i would refresh the page and you would already see there's a little bit of change in how the formatting is done. So there's a small changes in form font that you would already observe. So let's go ahead and really make use of the bootstrap and the jQuery stuff. So we would use bootstrap to style this page much, much better. Typically in bootstrap, what we do is we put all the content of the body in a div and we would want a little bit of formatting for that div. So we add a class called container. So, and I'll put this at the end of the add button so so now we have a container div where all the content of our page is in let's refresh the page you'd see that now there is a border given to everything i mean the container just gives us the entire border around the whole thing so that's very good so now at least there's a border around the page it's not really hanging to the edge we added a container class and we see that there is a little bit of formatting happening the way CSS works is based on classes. So when I want something to be formatted in a particular way, we use a specific class. So this class, you can think of it like an annotation. So just like when we add annotation on the class, it gets some special meaning. When I, we add a class in CSS, this particular thing gets a specific meaning. So now this container means give me some spacing, give me some border, proper border and margin and everything else. Usually, most of the CSS work would be to add a few specific classes. So now, we want to make the table formatted better. So what we need to do, add another class. Class is equal to table. This is a class which is defined by Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and refresh the page. Okay, there you see. 
now you see that the entire table is really well formatted now i would want to make these things alternate striped how do i do that again some magic from bootstrap we just need to add in something called table striped and you see that now it's alternatively striped this is the way you add two classes on the same element so you say class 1 space class 2 so once you say class 1 space class 2 now this particular element table has two classes on it the first formatting is table and the second one is table striped and bootstrap looks at this and what it does is it makes the table formatted in alternate striped way the last thing i don't like in here is the add button the add button does not look fit in with the page so what i'll do is i'll just put it in a div of its own div because it's better to have it in the buttons in a specific div i mean this does not really make a change it's the same page but what we need to do is make use of something called button let's use a class button and you'd see now it's formatted a little better but we would want to actually give it a proper color so we would say button success now you'd see that there's a real button being pressed so this is basically the button success class so the button successes class kind of shows it as a good button to click you want to add a new to do and that's a good thing to do so i make it a button success that was a quick step on formatting we used bootstrap to give the basic formatting to the page we basically use the bootstrap classes container table table striped btn for button and we used a concept called web jars to add the whole thing in all that we need to do was we added the dependencies and then we added the javascript and the css files to the jsp page and at the end we had to add in the mvc resources so that whatever was in the resources of the jars are exposed as static resources that's all for this particular step let's meet in Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.